Hi, my name is Mike Helmers, and today I'll be presenting open source tools, their impact and influence on the field of cybersecurity. This is a presentation for CYB 700, Introduction to Cybersecurity for my spring semester and final project. So today, what I will be going over is the topic of open source tools and cybersecurity. These tools have become an essential part of many organizations' cybersecurity strategies, allowing them to improve their security posture in a cost-effective way. This topic explores historical context, current trends, challenges, and the impact that open source tools have on humans in the cybersecurity industry. This considers both positive and negative impacts um, that occur from the use of these tools. To give some historical context around the open source movement, <clears throat> first I'd like to talk about NEW, which is a recursive acronym for NEWS, not UNIX. It's an operating system composed of entirely free software. It was developed by Richard Stallman in 1983 with the goal of creating a completely free operating system that could be used by anyone without restriction. As I mentioned, it's a recursive acronym that stands for NEWS, not UNIX, indicating that while the system was modeled after UNIX, it is not a UNIX clone. Next, Linux is an open source operating system that was created by Linus Torvalds in 1991. The system was also modeled after UNIX, but was designed to be compatible with an IBM PC hardware. It quickly gained popularity due to its stability, flexibility, and low cost compared to other operating systems. It's become an important part of the open source movement and many organizations and individuals have contributed to its development. It's widely used in servers, supercomputers, and mobile devices, and is considered to be stable and secure. Many tools within cybersecurity have been built around Linux, and even one of the more popular cybersecurity platforms, uh, Security Onion, is built on top of a Linux box. And finally, Netscape is an example of an open source tool that didn't begin that way. It was a web browser that widely used during the early days of the internet. And it became so popular in 1998, Netscape eventually released the source code for the Netscape web browser under an open source license, which became the basis of the Mozilla project and lives on today within the Firefox web browser. So what's happening these days? As I mentioned, Linux. There are several Linux distributions targeted specifically at the cybersecurity industry, both on the offensive and defensive side. Kali Linux and Paired OS are two examples of Linux distributions that are built to support the hacking tools, penetration testing, and allow flexibility. The reason that these are important is because it allows flexibility of users to pick and leave the tools that they want to do the job that they need. There's also security tools like John the Ripper and Hashcat that are built specifically to be used within a Linux environment. Open source tools on the threat detection and prevention side include Snort, Suricata, and Bro slash Zeek. Uh, these are examples of systems information and engineering management, or sorry, security information management tools that allow you to collect all of your logs and review them as you go looking for threats, looking for anomalies, and hunt. More recently, we've seen the adoption of DevSecOps. It's an approach that integrates security into the software development process from the beginning, rather than treating it as an afterthought. This uses tools like Ansible, which provides orchestration, Git, which, which uh, provides tracking for changes within a software in Jenkins to automate security testing. And this allows, this ensures that security is baked into the software development lifestyle because what typically will happen is developers will create a piece of software, not give security any thought, and several vulnerabilities will accidentally be baked into the software itself. An example of an incredibly positive impact of an open source tool is Let's Encrypt CertBot. This is a tool created by the Electronic Frontier Foundation. And Let's Encrypt is a free and open certificate authority that provides digital certificates to websites. These websites 
or certificates enabled secure communication between web browsers and servers, protecting users' data from interception and manipulation by criminals. This is what allows HTTPS to function. This is the S within that. Before Let's Encrypt, obtaining an SSL or TLS certificate from a website was complex and expensive. Many small businesses and individuals could not afford to purchase a certificate, leaving their websites vulnerable to cyber attacks and impersonation. Let's Encrypt changed this by offering free certificates and a model that was easy to obtain and install. Thanks to this, millions of websites around the world are now secured with Let's Encrypt certificates, making the internet a safer place for everyone. This is an example of how open source tools in cybersecurity can have a positive impact on human lives. Now there are some challenges. There are security risks that come with this. Open source tools are often developed by a community of volunteers, which means these are individuals who probably have other jobs that pay their bills. You will see someone create a piece of software and then that software may be abandoned if they have other things that come up, which means that if there's a new vulnerability discovered a new zero day, that might not be patched for some time. And they may not always come under the same level of scrutiny and testing as commercial solutions may. Compatibility issues. Open source tools are often developed independently of each other, which can stop them from talking to each other and systems. This can make it difficult to integrate open source tools into existing infrastructure. Along with many of these tools are designed for Linux systems, whereas most offices will run something like Apple, Mac OS, or Windows. And finally, lack of support. While the open source community is generally speaking positive and friendly and helpful, there's no guarantee that the developers of a, any specific tool are available or able to provide assistance if it breaks. So one, one topic or one common situation you'll see is a industry or a company develop an open source tool. Uh, Ubuntu is a Linux distribution that's a good example of this. And they will sell this, they will sell their services as a um, customer service related industry rather than like a product industry. So Ubuntu is free, the support for it is not. And that's what you would actually pay for should you purchase the product from them. Now, there are some downsides to the use of open source tools, specifically around hacker, hacking or cyber espionage, and that the, what that means is the these tools are freely available. Anyone on the internet can go download them and start playing with them. This lowers the barrier to access um, to hacking tools and people who may partake in malicious activity over the internet. An example of this was the Mirai botnet, this was a cyber attack in 2016 that was powered by open source software that is easily found on the web. I do want to say that it, it's worth noting that these negative impacts are not unique to open source tools and can occur and do occur with any technology. That said, it's important to remain vigilant and address the, these risks through proper training, security protocols, and ongoing maintenance and support. So, how do we use and get the most out of these tools? Well, performing thorough testing and vetting of open source tools before implementing them can make a big difference. This stops it, this allows them to be optimized for your environment, ensures that it doesn't break anything that's currently in production, it makes it easier to instruct your staff how to use them. Staying up to date with the latest security vulnerabilities and patches, you need to know what's operating on your machines, and these tools can help you do that, but these tools also require that knowledge of what's up to date. So like any good process, patch your software. Establish clear guidelines and protocols for using open source tools. Just because it's free doesn't mean it needs to be used or should be used within an environment. That's up to you to figure out what's appropriate. This may be a great open source tool, but it could have a vulnerability that's been unpatched for years. And there's a possibility it cannot be patched without breaking the tool. So it's important to like thoroughly test and vet the tools, like I mentioned before, to make sure that they won't make you more insecure. And you also don't want your staff just downloading anything they can onto their machines. 
and finally, fostering a culture of ongoing learning and development. You should encourage your employees to always go forward and explore new avenues, respectfully, of course, and teach them what are things they need to look out for that could be a security issue within a piece of software. So we've gone over the history of open source tools. They're affordable because oftentimes they're free. They're flexible because you can actually get, because it's open source, you can actually dive in and manipulate the code as needed. And there are some advantages and disadvantages to these tools. They've become increasingly popular in cybersecurity. And while they do have advantage, they're also come with certain challenges and potential negative impacts to humans. It's vital to acknowledge and address these issues to ensure the safe and effective use of open source tools within cybersecurity. For this presentation, I gathered information from the Open Source Security Foundation, National Cybersecurity, FFRDC, the Apache Software Foundation, the Linux Foundation, Electronic Frontier Foundation, and several images from Wikimedia and Wikicommons and the Electronic Frontier Foundation as well. Again, my name is Michael Helmers. Thank you for attending my presentation today, and I hope you have a wonderful evening.